Has you ever found yourself, you know, juggling files between different machines, wishing there was just a simpler, maybe faster way to share things? Or maybe you're looking at your tech setup, wondering if that next upgrade is actually going to be worth the effort, worth the potential hassle. Exactly. Those are the kinds of questions we're diving into today, specifically looking at Proxmox Virtual Environment 8.4. Right. We've been looking at what actual users are saying after making the jump to this latest version, their experiences, basically. Yeah, we've sifted through the forum posts, uh, the comments, grabbing their firsthand accounts, the wins, and yeah, even a few of their headaches. The idea is to give everyone a clear picture of what this Proxmox 8.4 upgrade really means in practice. Think of it as uh, a shortcut. We pull out the key insights so you get the gist without getting totally bogged down in technical jargon. So our mission for this deep dive is pretty straightforward. Is this upgrade a real game changer for people managing virtualized environments? We want to highlight the features making a difference, but also, you know, point out the bumps in the road some users hit. Okay, so let's get started. What were the big headline grabbers, the things that got the community talking about 8.4? Well, two things really seem to stand out. First, there's excitement, maybe anticipation is the better word, around live migration for mediated devices. Think NVIDIA vGPUs. Ah, moving a running VM with a shared graphics card without shutting it down, that's a big deal, even if it's more on the horizon for many. Definitely. We don't have like a demo to watch, but the potential is there and people are noticing. But the second thing seems more immediate. And that would be VirtioFS. Exactly. VirtioFS, we're seeing users call it awesome, even a game changer. It seems to be a major highlight for many you've upgraded. Okay, so why? What makes VirtioFS so impactful? What's it actually doing for people? Well, it seems to fundamentally simplify file sharing, specifically between the virtual machines and the Proxmox host itself. Right. Before this, many people, especially in home labs or small setups, relied on setting up NFS shares, oh. network file shares, to move files between VMs or between a VM and the host. And that can add layers of complexity, right? Oh. Network configuration, permissions. Precisely. VirtioFS offers a much more uh, direct, almost local feeling solution. It replaces the need for those NFS shares in many cases. Can you give us a sort of real world example? How would someone use this day to day? Sure. Think about a common home server setup. You might have Proxmox running VMs or containers for Plex, maybe SAB and ZBD for downloads, the whole R stack. Your media server setup, basically. Exactly. Getting those different pieces to easily access the same downloaded media files used to mean setting up NFS shares between them. It worked, but it was set up. Right. With VertioFS, that sharing becomes much, much simpler. It's more integrated, almost like the files are just locally accessible to everything that needs them without the network share layer. We saw one user running exactly that Plexa Bean Speed R stack, calling it a seamless local sharing solution now. That does sound way more straightforward. So what's the tech behind it? Why is it faster or more efficient than NFS, as users seem to be suggesting? Ah, the efficiency boost comes from how it's designed. One user broke it down pretty well. It's essentially a RAM-based Fusey function. Fuse file system in user space. Right. Think of it like sharing files directly through the computer's memory, which is obviously very fast. But the key thing is it largely bypasses the traditional networking stack, the OSI layers. So less overhead compared to sending packets over a network, even a virtual one. Exactly. Traditional networking has multiple layers of protocol handling. VirtioFS skips a lot of that, which means lower overhead, faster data transfer, better performance for this specific task of host guest sharing. Okay, that makes sense. So compelling software improvements there. What about the hardware side? Is Proxmox 8.4 running well in different kinds of machines? Yeah, the range of hardware people are successfully using is pretty impressive. We're seeing reports covering everything from, you know, older enterprise servers like HP DL380 Gen 8s. Still capable machines, but definitely not brand new. Right. And then all the way up to modern mini PCs and uh, powerful desktop builds. Like someone mentioned a Ryzen 9 7900 rig with 128 gigs of RAM. Wow. Okay. So it scales from modest to pretty high end. It really speaks to Proxmox's flexibility. Yeah. And stability. Mm -hmm. Is it holding up across that diverse hardware? Especially with kernel updates, sometimes that can be tricky. Generally, yes, the feedback is positive. Many users specifically opted into the newer 6.14 kernel available in 8.4. That's the optional one, right? Not the default yet. Correct. And those who tried it are mostly reporting zero issues, things running smooth. That's encouraging. Any specific examples where that newer kernel actually enabled something new for users? Mm -hmm. Like 
hardware working that didn't before. Absolutely. There was a great example from one user whose onboard Bluetooth wasn't recognized previously. Oh, interesting. With the 6.14 kernel, boom, it showed up. And they were able to pass that Bluetooth controller directly through to their Home Assistant VM. Ah, so they could connect Bluetooth devices like sensors directly to Home Assistant running in a VM. Exactly. They mentioned managing a Bluetooth thermometer this way. It's those kinds of seamless hardware integrations that can really improve the experience, especially for home automation, folks. That's a neat win. Now, speaking of system stuff, I saw mentions of ZFS. People seem keen on getting ZFS 2.3. What's the big deal there? ZFS 2.3 is definitely on the wish list. The major feature people are waiting for is the ability to expand existing ZRAID VDEVs or storage pools. Meaning you could add more drives to your existing RAID setup to increase capacity without rebuilding everything. Precisely. Right now, expanding certain ZFS pool types is complex or impossible. ZFS 2.3 promises to make adding drives to, say, a RAID's pool much easier. I can see why that's highly anticipated, especially for users whose storage needs grow over time. For sure, it offers much more flexibility. Some users mentioned having extra drives just sitting there waiting for this capability. Okay, so underlying system looks good, hardware support is broad. What about the actual upgrade process to 8.4? Smooth sailing or choppy waters? You know, for the vast majority, the reports indicate it was remarkably smooth. That phrase came up a few times. That's always good to hear. From 8.3 mainly, or earlier versions too. Both people upgrading from 8.3, but also some coming from earlier 8.x versions reported no major issues. Any standout stories of reliability? Well, one user shared a pretty impressive anecdote. They've been using Proxmox for 10 years and have only had one issue during an upgrade in that entire time. Wow, okay, that's a solid track record. It really speaks to the stability of their upgrade process generally. Now, when people were trying out that newer optional 6.14 kernel, did they have ways to protect themselves in case it didn't play nice with their specific hardware? Yes, and this is a smart strategy many used. They would pin their currently running stable kernel, maybe a 6.8.x version. Pinning meaning they'd tell the system not to automatically remove it. Exactly. Then they'd install the 6.1 first kernel and set the bootloader to try booting into 6.14 on the next restart. Ah, so if 6.14... Cause problems, black screen, network issues, whatever. A simple reboot would let them choose the older, pinned, known good kernel from the boot menu and get their system back easily. It's a nice fallback. That's a really practical tip. Right. Now, the source mentioned a few fails. What were some of those less common edge case problems people ran into? Right. It wasn't all perfect for everyone. We saw a couple of isolated things. One user had a motherboard actually fail shortly after upgrading. Ouch related to the upgrade. They themselves said it was probably just a coincidence. And honestly, hardware can fail any time, but it's a reminder that correlation isn't causation. True, any other hiccups? There was one user whose VM wouldn't boot after the upgrade. It turned out to be related to how Proxmox handles booting from ISO images now. Okay, what changed? It seems Proxmox deprecated the use of a certain type of virtual drive, a fake IDE drive, for ISO booting in some configurations. The fix was simple though. What was it? Just adding a specific parameter, media disk, to that VM's configuration file told Proxmox how to handle the ISO correctly, and the VM booted right up. Okay, so relatively minor issues, and crucially, there were clear fixes available. Exactly, more quirks than showstoppers for those edge cases. Let's shift gears a bit towards more advanced users. Are there areas where Proxmox 8.4, while good, still has some room for improvement based on what people are saying? Definitely. While the core is solid, some more complex tasks could be, let's say, more user-friendly. Sharing host directories with LXC containers came up. LXC containers, not full VMs. How does sharing work there? You can use something called bind mounts, which lets you map a directory from the host directly into the container's file system. It's powerful. Oh, but managing the user ID mappings, making sure the permissions line up correctly between the host user and the container user that was specifically called out as being somewhat complicated, an easier UI for this would be welcome. I can imagine. UID, GID mapping can get fiddly. What else? Any thoughts on clustered environments? multiple Proxmox hosts working together. Yeah, there was a desire expressed for a simpler way to synchronize and share network shares, like NFS or SMB shares, across the different hosts in a Proxmox cluster. So making shared storage easier to manage in a multi-node setup. Exactly. Streamlining that would definitely be a benefit for larger deployments. Okay, now 8.4 introduced some new UI elements around SDN. 
software defined networking, specifically for DNS. Yeah. How's that landing? There was definite interest there. People hoped it might simplify assigning DNS settings within their virtual networks, maybe replacing manual setups some are using. Like one user mentioned using PowerDNS previously. Right. They noted more DNS options appearing in the UI, which was promising. However, the initial feedback suggests that actually using this new SDN DNS feature effectively might still require a bit of networking know-how. It wasn't quite a point-and-click solution for everyone straight away. So it may be powerful, but still has a learning curve. Seems that way for now. And speaking of networking challenges, one user actually ran into significant network problems after their upgrade. Oh, what happened? Not just a configuration thing. It sounded more complex. Their remote Proxmox box became unreachable over SSH, HTTPS, their remote management tool, but it was still responding to pings. Weird. So the machine was up, Network link was up, but services weren't responding. Apparently. A reboot would fix it temporarily, but the issue would come back after a few hours. It really highlights the depth of customization in Proxmox because the solution wasn't simple. What did they end up doing? They had to roll back their kernel, not just from 6.14, but to an even older one, 6.11.11-2, to get stable network connectivity back on that specific machine. Wow. That really underlines that while Proxmox offers immense control, sometimes specific hardware or complex setups can interact unexpectedly with newer software components like kernels. It does. And it also shows the value of Proxmox allowing that level of fine-tuning and the ability to easily switch kernels when needed. Absolutely. So looking ahead then, beyond the ZFS 2.3 people are waiting for, what else is still on the community's wish list for future Proxmox versions? Well, live migration for LXC containers is a big one, using a technology called CRIU Checkpoint Restore in user space. Moving a running container between hosts without downtime. That's the goal. It's technically complex, but highly desired. Also, related to what we discussed earlier, work is apparently ongoing for a better user interface for managing those bind mounts for containers. Making that sharing easier. Good. Anything else? And uh, the continued desire for more turnkey, easier to configure GPU pass-through support, especially it seems for newer Intel hardware like Arc GPUs and the integrated graphics on modern Intel CPUs. Right, getting that direct GPU access for VMs, maybe for gaming or transcoding without extensive manual configuration. Exactly. It's possible now, but simplifying it remains a goal for many. Okay. So despite these ongoing witches, it sounds like the overall vibe around Proxmox VE 8.4 is actually really positive. Overwhelmingly so, yes. The general consensus in the user feedback we looked at is that 8.4 delivers. It's seen as a victory, a solid step forward. And the reasons seem to be that speed, stability, the control it offers performance improvements, good stability for most users, and that deep customization and transparent control that Proxmox is known for, people really value that. I remember seeing one comment, someone just saying they were blown away by how easy it is to virtualize things with Proxmox now. Yeah, that speaks volumes about its usability, even with all its power, it's accessible. Were there any other little wins, things people discovered? There was one user who mentioned discovering the LXC app list feature. Apparently it helps find templates or something. And they found it a huge improvement, almost like a pleasant surprise they hadn't expected. A quieter win, maybe. Nice. So summing it all up then, the takeaway seems to be Proxmox VE 8.4 is a solid smart upgrade, especially for users who want that power and control without huge drama or downtime. That's the picture that clearly emerges from the user experiences, yes. A few edge cases, a few features still wished for, absolutely. But the core upgrade seems very positive. And those tangible benefits like VirtuFS for easier file sharing, the stability, the hardware support, those are making a real difference for people. Definitely. It addresses some common pain points effectively. So listening to how these users are using 8.4, simplifying their setups, maybe unlocking new things, it makes you wonder, doesn't it? What mm -hmm. kind of efficiency or maybe what new ideas could this kind of virtualization power bring to your own projects, your own needs? That's the real question, isn't it? If you've got that file sharing headache or you're running that R stack, whatever your specific challenge is. Could something like VirtioFS running on a platform like Proxmox offer a totally different, maybe much better way to approach it? It's worth considering. And, you know, seeing the ongoing development, the active community, it really suggests an exciting future for Proxmox and for this kind of accessible, powerful virtualization in general.